Today is Wednesday, May 25th, and it has been seven days since my weight has been 120 or higher. I just woke up, that's why my voice is a little cracky and my eyes are a little swollen, but I was just really excited because I just hit a lower weigh-in today. <laughs> it's not my lowest weigh-in, it's actually two pounds higher than my lowest weigh-in, but I told you guys in my last video that, um, or two videos ago, that my weight has been stalling and actually increasing. We did go to the body fat analyzer, body fat scan test, and we did see that I have gained some lean body mass since I started my cut, so that has to do with, um, that is contributing to my weight increase, but my body is also definitely stalling with fat loss. That the I'm really struggling video, that I was really struggling because um, fat loss is stalled, and when you have prep, you have a deadline, and means you gotta do what you gotta do to get that fat loss moving again. And since my body is very adaptive, um, we had to take some more extreme measures, so I will explain what those are right now. Yes, we are currently laying on the floor. That's where I like to spend a lot of my time lately. Uh, planning out my life, plotting my life on the floor. So I just want to quickly touch upon what I had to do, um, what changes we made. So what I am going to do is be brave and share my numbers with you guys, although I am anticipating a potential of getting some flack for what we're doing in order to get stage lean, but I haven't, my body has adapted and it has not lost fat and I have a deadline and we talked about this in the last video. I'm not going to make a disclaimer for what I have to do to uh, get stage ready. My macros changed on May 18th, and today is May 24th. My coach changed my macros to... We'll do this. So we adjusted macros to 80 carb, 45 fat, 125 protein on low days, 175 carb, 35 fat, 125 protein on high carb days. And then my weight continued to increase and stay in the 120s, which is a very high weight for me. Um, my low weigh-ins are around 117, which was like way back here, a few weeks back. I wasn't looking very good either, so we had high weigh-ins, and then I did two 350-calorie cardio sessions. No training is written here, but I had low-carb days and a high-carb day. Um, on Sunday, I did the very, very long hike that you guys saw in the last video. It was two cardio sessions worth, and then one of those cardio sessions is going to go into this week because I already did two here. This is this this week, so I'm eight and nine weeks out here, still at 120, no weight drops after the hike on Sunday. So, so same exact thing happened yesterday after the long cardio hike um, that I burned 1,200 calories on. I didn't even drop weight, like, at all. And... Like I said, weight isn't the number one thing, but I also wasn't looking better and um, fat loss was not happening. I sent progress pictures to my coach. I was like, what do we gotta do? So decision has been made to start a little bit of a depletion phase. So we're gonna try to get my body into fat burning zone. Apparently that's not where it is right now, even with the 80 carb for a week. So um, coach asked me what my thoughts were on going into a little bit of a depletion phase, potentially being ready early, just so we don't have to stress out closer to show. We're eight and nine weeks out right now. So I said, let's freaking do it. I'm ready. I'm not hungry. I'm not tired. Okay, maybe I'm a little hungry. I'm always hungry though. I'm not hungry. My workouts have not suffered and I'm not very tired. Even after that long hike, I had a really great workout. So um, I told them like, let's do it. I'm not gonna die mindset is everything here everything so whenever life throws you a curveball like what's happening to me right now and when the way my macros have been dropped um you have to go into it saying okay i can do this as opposed to like this is going to be hard as shit i could have thought that way but that just would have made my worrying and my stress worse so we drop macros too Three low, one high. Where that's the carb cycle I've always been doing, guys. Three carb, three low carb days, one high carb day. The low carb days are at 50 carbs now. Starting yesterday, <laughs> so 50 carbs, 45 fat still, which is great. I can still have high fat. Um, 125 protein and high carb days, which I will have one of those today because that's my scheduled carb cycle. 175 carbs and 35 fat. So fats are a little bit lower. 
So here we are on the floor. We're eight and a half weeks out and I actually hit a lower than 120 weight today. It actually dropped a whole pound, which I'm like so happy about. Um, yeah, so sometimes you have to do what you have to do to get stage lean. I do not recommend anybody do this in order to just lose some body fat. Personally, for me, my body is very adaptive. Um, my metabolism is kind of slow, regardless of how much muscle I'm putting on. Hopefully, in years to come, I won't have to do this. But as of right now, it's what I have to do. It's just the decision that I have made. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do it. As of right now, I'm actually not even minding it because I'm really anxious to see some progress happening. And being low carb is actually pretty easy for me. Like, as long as I can have some fats and, and protein in my diet... Um, I'm the queen of volume eating and low carb meals. This morning I'm actually fasting, which is not that long because um, I have an appointment at 8.30 at the body spec place that I went to get my body fat tested at and we're going to do a resting metabolic rate test. It's a breathing test. I'm not sure what it entails, but I'm going to go get ready for that and I will show you guys what we're doing and what we're working with. here was we cooked the oatmeal in the microwave for two minutes with a ton of water over it just enough to saturate it and it like comes out with so much volume and then we cooked egg whites separately and I like to just like mix them all up together like this and it just comes out to be so much volume and usually I'll use like if I'm low carb like yesterday I was low carb so I used half of a serving of regular oats which was only 13 grams of carbs and I, today I used 30 because it's high carb day put this in the fridge it comes out to be like nice and cold and delicious and then on top of this we're gonna do half a serving of these frozen blueberries because I love them 140 grams for a whole serving which is 17 carbs half a serving is gonna be 70 grams for like nine or eight carbs or something so we're gonna do 70 grams which is like a decent amount we're gonna do 69 for good measure <laughs> Mix it all together, and then we're just going to pop this in the fridge until I can eat it after the test. So I lost my funnel a while back, so we're just going to go ahead and use the hand. <laughs> so there is no eating or drinking before this test. I'm bringing some aminos to take with me for immediately after it's done because I'm going to be hungry and my food is here. Let's go. Hey, how are you? Amanda? Yes, that's me. You ready to go? I'm ready. Bathroom first? I'm okay. You were not born in 216. We just input your information, and what the machine's gonna do is calibrate itself off the oxygen in the room. Okay. Um, once that's done, you'll be breathing into what I have in the bag here, which is a breathing tube, so that we're trapping all the air you're breathing out. Okay. So we'll know how much oxygen you use during the test. So, first uncomfortable part. That heavy foam part goes in your nose. In my nose? Into your nose, not oh, in your nose. I was going to get it. Okay. Good luck getting it in there. Okay. Nice. Perfect. <laughs> and go ahead and close your mouth and give that a little blow. Is there any, that looks good. Nothing getting out, right? No. Okay. okay. Go ahead and lean back. And then just make sure it's tight, yeah. I bite on it. You can bite on it. Huh? I've seen a couple different strategies. So that's it. <laughs> this is it. 14 minutes at this point. Do you want me to? Yeah, because I've got in. The top? Mm -hmm. 
the red one uh, behind that. Oh, I see. How much do you eat when you normally eat? Why? Oh, I'm just curious. Do you I'm dieting you right now, so I'm eating less than I normally am. So I'm eating in a deficit right now. What do you know what that is? Like the total um, calorie? Thing? Total calorie. Let me like, and it just changed. My metabolism is pretty slow and very adaptive usually when I'm dieting. So if I make changes to my diet and eat less calories and increase cardio, it works for like a week and a half, and then I stop. Okay. All right. Cool. So I'm assuming the results say that they're low. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I've actually been dieting for six weeks now and my weight has increased and the DEXA scan said that I gained some lean body, body mass but I've only lost like a pound of fat. Okay. So my metabolism just... <laughs> yeah, it basically... definitely has adapted, yeah. yeah. We're looking at the orange bars. Okay. The dark orange bar is what we actually measured your arm to be today. Yeah, that's low. Yeah, it's, pre yeah, it's pretty low. So if 1,066 we... calories. Oh, I'm I'm trying not to say numbers out loud in case there's other people around. Oh, that's so okay. That's I'm like I'm like my... doing this for an educational YouTube video, totally. so it's so that that's what we actually me measured example, is 1066. Right? Mm -hmm. The orange bars above this are going to be predictions based on your RMR. So it's predicting like a sedentary to moderate lifestyle and activity. Okay. And then it's predicting this would be like a mile and a half walk. Oh yeah. That's nice. Um. So we got to change your lifestyle and activity per, like measurement and same with the exercise measurement. We're gonna change right. that based on your lifestyle and yes. your exercise. Yes. For some days you don't exercise, so we gotta remove that completely. Um, the resting metabolic rate is basically what it takes for your body to exist daily. So mm -hmm. this 1066 right now is what your body would burn if you didn't get out of bed, right? You just stayed in the cot yeah. all day. So if you're eating under that number, you're already starving your current organ and muscle function. So mm -hmm. we'll probably see muscle loss. Right. So we generally recommend not to cut underneath your RMR. Right. Based on your lifestyle and activity, what do you what do you do for work? Um, so I work for myself. I usually work from home. So my day-to-day -day activity during like the work day, I'm usually either running errands or filming YouTube videos or answering emails and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. But um, I'm also competing for a competition in July. It's eight weeks away. And I typically train five or six days a week. I do um, pretty heavy lifting. So I do like powerlifting style training. And then right now I'm doing 350 calorie cardio sessions, um, three of them a week. And so how, how, do you, how do you measure that? I have a polar heart rate monitor. Okay. And so I'll measure it with that. And then I'll do either steady state or high intensity intervals, but I'll make sure I burn the same amount of calories each time just so it's consistent. Okay. So either, God, either the, even though the intensity is like different for right, high intensity. Right, if you're doing intervals or, or whatever, mm -hmm. the heart rate comes up, you just try yeah. to average out at yeah. 50. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so that's like, that's going to be an easy one to add on top. Right, right exactly. The, the hard one is lifestyle and activity. Right, um, yeah. I would, it's I would different say, every day. I would say that's pretty accurate. It's probably around 300. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would say that's pretty accurate 300 too. To 400. Yeah, the, so the DEXA scan that I got a week ago, I got one six weeks prior to that, and it said that I gained three pounds of lean body mass. So I don't know if that's because I just recently started powerlifting style mm -hmm. training. So I think that might be like new uh, stimulus, kind of like a freebie right away. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think so. Even though I've been training like in the gym for like six years now, I think it's just still kind of like the difference in training and like the higher um, weight and like increased training volume in general. So like mm -hmm. more muscle gain and I guess. So if we look down here in the the, uh, the graph that would show you where you are, okay. you're below normal. Yes I am. And that's by 22% right now. Dang, that's a lot. So what, what, what we wanna be thinking about is how big that deficit gets. So if you're eating 1200, like on a day you don't exercise, mm -hmm. you're still under your, you're still in a caloric deficit, right? Right. That's probably like 100 to 200 calorie deficit which isn't too big, mm -hmm. but if you're working out and you're doing some heavy lifts and then a 350 calorie run on top of right. that, like we might be creating such a big deficit that your body's holding on to the body fat, not getting right. rid of it. Um, generally when that happens, you actually lose muscle tissue though. So for you to be gaining muscle tissue, that's either an extreme case of like a brand new stimulus, your body mm -hmm. doesn't really understand, but generally you wouldn't put on muscle. Um, I like to use a business analogy with that. Like if you got your muscles would be employees, and your fat storage is your bank account. Like right. If you're in, if you're doing business, you got to pay your employees. So month to month, money comes in. Yeah. You pay your employ, you pay your employees, and right. then any extra money you save, put in a savings account. If business is a little bad, like you're a little short, you'll you'll consider, yeah, I'll keep my employees. There's enough work, so you pull from your savings to pay them. Right. If business gets too bad, you're in too big of a deficit. Right. Any money coming across your desk, you're putting in your account because you, you're not doing very well and you actually have to lay people off to balance that budget. Right. In fact, you're gaining muscle doesn't... Yeah, it's very confusing. There's not evidence towards under eating right now. 
Right. But the fact you kind of know your metabolism slows down and you stop losing the body fat mm -hmm. is something that would be evidence towards you going into metabolic syndrome or starvation mode. Right. So this is, we sort of have evidence against yeah. them for at this point. Yeah. Interesting. Um, let me calculate it quick because I go based off of like protein, carbs, and fat macros, and I hit the macros, and then the calories change. Mm -hmm. But I started off at 1345 calories on low carb days. That's what I started off at, and then mm -hmm. high carb days were at 1700 calories. And high carb days are the days you actually are lifting or doing yeah, cardio. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm lifting and then not doing cardio. Okay. So like high carb days are no cardio. Yeah. Plus okay, mm -hmm. plus lift. Just because like um, the goal of the high carb day is to, like potentially bring it back up like leptin and T3 levels and stuff like that. And then glycogen like if, replenishment. Yeah. As so to like just if you're burning burn. calories, it's that's like negating the whole point of it. Now they're at 1145 on low days, 1500 on high days. So I, it's about a 200 calorie drop on both high and low carb days. So. And how long? How long are you lifting when you lift? Like an hour and a half. What? Well, because I'm doing, um, like, my training is, like, I usually do heavier sets of, like, squats and deadlifts and compound lifts and stuff so like that. Like, so you've, like, added more rest into these workouts because the intensity's yeah. gone way up? Not, that like, makes... not way up every single week. Like, mm -hmm. the training's actually been pretty similar throughout uh, the last six weeks or actually, like, the last two months or so. Like, the training's exactly pretty similar, but maybe slightly more rest because I'm, like, a little bit more more tired. But okay. usually rest sets in between is, like, a minute and a half or two minutes or three, so depending how, on what I need. How much of that time are you actually, like, moving weight then? Exactly. So it's not an hour and a half. It's probably, like, 45 minutes, like, total. Okay, so what, 500, 600 calories? Is that somewhere where you're predicting I'd it? I'd probably say it's a little high. That's a little high. Yeah. Okay. Because so I'm, like like, I'm, like, I'm not, like, doing high-intensity, like, cardio training. Uh, like I'm doing cardio separate from the right, right, right. So know. like 400 to 500 yeah. instead. So if we add the 300 for lifestyle and activity on a day you're just lifting, we add another 500. That's 800 over this, so we're up to like 1850. Yeah. Um. So you, it doesn't look like your deficit's getting too big right now. Okay. Right. Wait. We, so you said it's 1850. So if we add, yeah, from, from the uh, 1066, mm -hmm. if we're adding uh, 300. To that, and then another 500 for exercise. That would be 18, 1850. Around, this is what right? I'm burning a day, like a normal lifting 1850 day. 1850 to 1900. Yeah, for, yeah. for a day you're lifting, and then if you throw in the 350 cardio, cardio we're up to like 2200 to 2250. Okay. Um, that's lifting and cardio. Do right. you ever mix those as well? Um, some days I'll do them on the same day. Yeah. Okay. So those days you're up to 2250. Right. If you're up to 2250 and you're eating 15. On high carb days. 1500 on the high carb. Mm -hmm. So that's putting you at a 700 to 750 calorie deficit, which also isn't too extreme. Plenty yeah. of people carry that big of a I deficit. mean, this is the very temporary, like, like, prep. Like it's a big like, cut. Yeah, me. like the cut in general, like to get to, like, do you know anything about bodybuilding competitions mm -hmm. and stuff? Like, it's very temporary, like, it's not throughout the whole year. So obviously, it might not be super healthy for, like, the whole entire time, but calorie. Deficits might need to be a little lower than the average person to get to like a stage lean level sure. And then obviously I like after the show is over I'll try to get back up to like a maintenance calorie as quickly as possible Okay so, Sounds like you got a pretty accurate or the nutrition you're doing is yeah. like right around where it needs to be yeah. um, Here we are. That's funny that you were like <laughs> How many calories are you eating? Your resting metabolic rate is low. Yeah Yeah, well the 22% 20 oh, yeah. lowers like, you know the fact you know that it's slow mm -hmm. is good because then it's not surprising. Like it was surprising, like my first couple goes goes around. Yeah, I like freaked out. So I was you're like, just, why am I adapting? You must be you know genetically slower to start with, and mm -hmm. then your body just adapts when you start cutting calories. So mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's kind of like oh no, that's pretty that's like significantly lower right. than most people. You might want to check that out, or but no, if you're yeah. aware of it, then right. that's. Then that's and like Sounds I spend normal. a significant amount of the year building muscle and in a caloric surplus as well. So like I try to increase my lean body mass. So mm -hmm. this doesn't have to be as low, but it doesn't necessarily always work out that way. Right. So. so but like over the years, that's like my goal is to increase my muscle mass. So this doesn't have to be as low. Hopefully like my resting metabolic rate will increase over the years as I grow more lean muscle mass yeah, and stuff like that. The, the, as far as the DEXA scan goes, mm -hmm. it predicts around a hundred calorie shift based on 10 pounds of muscle. So it's around 10 calories uh, per oh. pound of muscle per day. Hmm. So if you just gained three pounds of muscle on the last scan and you 
are able to gain another seven pounds, we should see that go up about a hundred calories. Ah, uh -huh, interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, okay. So when you start cutting, you want to try to hold on to as much of it as you yeah, can. Yeah, of so course. Especially, slow it down too much. Yeah. It's still going to slow down with the calorie restriction. Exactly. But, um, yeah, when you're gaining muscle, you know, you, you might need to add, as you're gaining lean tissue, you might need to add more calories to your diet because your metabolism right. will slowly yeah. increase. Yeah. And my, my coach will do like diet breaks throughout my prep too. So like I'm kind of grinding a little bit lower now just so I can like see some progress. But like, uh, a, like a diet break will be like going back up to maintenance calories for like a five to seven day periods to like kind of restore those hormone levels and then mm -hmm. get the fat burning hormones working again kind of gotcha. thing. So. Like we tried different things, but I definitely have experimented with like bringing calories back up and down and seeing like what actually works. So this is very helpful. Awesome. Cool. I'm glad I came to do this. Thank you for explaining everything. I appreciate there's, it. There's a Alrighty guys, thank you so much for listening. If you did stick around for that whole entire thing, I hope it was incredibly helpful to you. It was very helpful to me to learn all of that information. The guy that was there was very smart and we talked a lot about metabolic rate and why calories are the way that they are and I'm hoping that's helpful to some of you guys. I try to have a lot of informative content on this channel so again if you listen and suck around thank you if you decided to skip over the talk that's totally fine too. Um, this is a workout that I did the day before the metabolic rate test. This was Ari's last day here so we did back and buys together. We started off with some lat pull downs. We were doing kneeling lat pull downs which are some of my favorite exercises to do. We moved on to cable um, rope pulls, and then we found an Emily Hayden. She's awesome. She's killing it right now. Three weeks out from Junior USA's in Chicago, which I'm pumped about. And we did this lat pull-down machine over here, one of my favorite machines in Gold's Gym. It's a hammer strength machine focused on squeezing the lats and having that mind-muscle connection really connect today. And then we also did this, but um, this is a single-arm um, single arm hammer strength. I guess you can call it pull down type deal. Um, I put my hand at the very edge of the hammer strength um, connector thing. Not really sure what to call that, but I got a really good connection doing that movement. These are dumbbell pullovers. So um, my first time trying this movement, I actually struggled really hard getting the muscle mind connection. But if you go really slow and focus and do a weight that's challenging but not too difficult, you can uh, practice focusing on your muscle mind connection and only squeezing with your lats and try not to use your arms to pull the, pull the dumbbell over your body, just squeeze with your lats. So I had Ari go really slow because she was um, learning the movement for the first time as well. And then we also did some rear delt uh, pec deck flies right here. I was telling Ari to not um, pull her arms too far apart, stop right when you're at parallel. You don't want your traps to get activated, so you just want to focus on the rear delt. So I was touching her rear delt, telling her to stop right when um, she got to parallel right there. And then we found Emily, and I was petting her bicep because she has a really good bicep vein right now. She's getting freaking shredded. She looks awesome. I was just, uh, yeah, basically petting her muscles, and then she flexed. If you guys aren't already, make sure you're following Emily Hayden on YouTube. She has really, really good informative content. So if you guys liked what I post, and you'll absolutely love her channel as well. She's three weeks out from her first national show, and she's um, on the, the way to get her pro card. So... Go ahead and follow her if you haven't already. After this exercise, we moved on to doing bicep curls. Just Emily started bicep curls, and then we started them as well. There she is. Um, so I did the easy bar bicep curls first. I had my hands at a medium grip right there. That's Ari, not me, but I did the same exact thing. And then after that, I did uh, alternating dumbbell bicep curls as well. So that'll be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for listening to me talk pretty much the whole entire video. Tomorrow's video will be a little bit more entertaining in terms of uh, entertainment factor as opposed to more informative content. But give this video a thumbs up if you, if you liked the informative content on the video today. And um, let me know in the comments section what you think about today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I appreciate you.